So, in the remaining, about 15 minutes, uh, we Stephen? got 15 minutes for the good stuff. Can I <laughs> can I jump in with it? as you're going to be Vsan6 yes. with a quick question? Um, somebody on Twitter had <coughs> asked this question on. You mentioned Vsan6 is going to support all flash configurations. Yes. The question was if there's going to be a difference in licensing if you're going to use it with all flash. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. <laughs> right here. Yes. Yes, there is. Yes. Okay. There will be there's an additional license. An additional license. An additional for license to go with all flash. Okay, thank you. Yes, so good people segue start throwing here. eggs and stuff so and I don't have, answer those questions. Just, I'll go, I'll no, go no, not for, not for that I'll one. I'll go really quick because we have touched upon some of these things. So we support many of new features, more scalability, we talk about that. <coughs> uh, some enterprise data services and most importantly, uh, the new snaps of technology, actually rack awareness. So we're talking about, uh, about uh, uh, replicas, right? So now we can, we're aware of four domains like racks and we never put two replicas on the same rack of the same VMDK, things like that. Uh, broader hardware support, including support for, for JBOD. Let's go into some of the details. Are we still limited to 32 uh, all flash nodes, or is it up to 64? 64. 64. Well, it is up to 64. 64. 64. And all, in both architectures, hybrid and, and uh, it's the flash. same for both, yeah. Yeah, and, uh, and all the, the object scalability limits, all these things are the same across the both we're, architectures. We're still limited to I mean. one SSD per disk group. Yes. And yeah. exactly, and that is, as I said, I, I, I thought I'd justify that error because we want the disk group to be a full domain. And that is a much easier way to do that. I, I understand how it yes. makes life easier for you, but just like I would like it there to be a, vo a volume manager so I can mirror right in vSAN, right in but vSphere. But we mirror in software, right? Well, in vSAN, but not in vSphere. Yes, right. Yeah, just like I would like, you know, simple disk mirroring in, like, in vSphere, I'd like to be able to say, take these two SSDs because I have two 400 gig SSDs when I really want 800 gig and treat them as one, as the SSD layer of one disk pool because but I only have three disk drives and how I allocate two disk drives to two, three disk drives to two SSDs is complicated. Yeah. Okay, so. Oh, could you go back to the prior slide <coughs> for one second? Did you slide? The prior slide. It mentions hardware based checksum under enterprise data services. Mm -hmm. Do you want to elaborate on that? Yeah, we, we support uh, checksums uh, that are uh, supporting the diff and dix uh, standard between the controller and the disks. And so actually, Rollison can provide more the, details the there. data server back to the disk. So essentially, the, the controller calculates the checksum yes. when the data come in, and then when You're the... You're not doing it from the client all the way to the back. You're just doing it from the... I, I could talk more about that if this guy would allow me. Ah, okay. Bear with us. <laughs> 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 I have to have a bad guy here, right? <laughs> Release, right? Oh, and uh, hardware-based encryption also, to yeah. the point of the checksum. Yes. But, it, but if you're supporting T10 diff, then that's a good reason to require SAS drives. Yes, yes. correct. Right. Actually, the reason we don't have, we have very, very few SSD drives in, in our HCL. Mm -hmm. And the reason is not performance. It's not features. It's, how shall I put it in a politically correct way, uh, non-deterministic behavior for some critical, <laughs> wow, <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> right? Uh, like, what we want to do, that's another advantage of being doing some of these things down in the low levels of the kernel. We can manage the physically the devices. So what we do is we, we disable uh, the, the on, on this cache. For, at least in some cases for some for certain reasons so th when the data go into the really our, our goal is when we write the darn data to the magnetic disk we want to know that it's written right mm -hmm. drives uh, 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 non sas drives sometimes cannot even give us that guarantee I can turn off the, 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 the cache, but and if there is some on the bus, there is like a bus reset, which often happens if the, de the yeah. device has some hiccups, the, 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 fla the, the cache is turned on again. And, <laughs> and even, we don't even know that. And even the smart counters do, cannot even, do not even record the, the bus resets that have happened to the device. How? I'm completely helpless yeah, there, so right? You, so you have How to, can I guarantee the integrity send, of the you data? You have to send disable cache with every write. Yes, <laughs> yes, exactly. Which is, as you know, <laughs> won't fly, right? Performance-wise. So, yeah. I mean, we're, we're helpless. If we don't have such basic fu uh, func fun functional integrity, how can I guarantee the integrity of your data? Those are the reasons you see. We actually, 
we when if you talk to me like three years ago i said oh yeah yeah we're going to go out like after the the chip disc strike but the reality was very different when we start qualifying those discs so all flash i'm big i'll be quick here but there are some a couple of important points i want to make in the current version of the product in six so we are using still two tiers even with all flash configurations and the reason is that <coughs> we, our product management team run, we, we're going to spend hours and hours with uh, all the Flask vendors. <coughs> they create these complex models and these mind-boggling spreadsheets that I don't even want to look at. And they, all the models, and with agreement with the, with the vendors, they, they indicating that if you have a, a two-tier architecture, it results in a b more cost-efficient, I think. Essentially, what we do is we use a small, expensive, but high endurance uh, flash, de flash devices for right caching. Those are the guys that take they, 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 all the, the big hit of the rights. And we use for <coughs> the capacity tier, bigger, much cheaper, but lower endurance drives just to store the data. And I, I cannot really elaborate, even if, even if I want, I could not repeat the, the models here, but that results in overall better cost. Mm -hmm. And essentially what we do here, we have this, uh, the, 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 the right cache that takes all the rights there. And really, this is now we have a very different caching model here. Remember about that right back buffering, targeting the sequ sequential work or proximal work for the magnetic disk? <coughs> not applicable here anymore. These guys the, in the capacity tier can take as many <laughs> random IOPS as you have, right? Yeah. right? Uh, really fast. But they, you don't want to write too much to them. You don't, don't, don't have much, much uh, um, uh, endurance. Right. And also, so moreover... You are, you are uh, certifying uh, consumer grade uh, MLC drives? We have... We ML ML actually, I have the numbers the here. MLC because they are still very costly. Uh, do, do, do you want much, to comment on that? Uh, they're much, the, the low endurance uh, uh, read intensive SSDs are much cheaper than yeah, uh, the typical SSD that. Yeah, uh, yeah, of course. Yeah. Uh, so they, the, um, what they're what they're you regular MLC. MLC. Yeah, they're MLC. But they're enterprise drives because they have the power fail detection. Okay. Correct. I think that's a, 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 that's a, a, good, a good summary, yes. <laughs> uh, so, I mean, and I can tell about devices we use but really the endurance here we're targeting is like 0.2 terabytes rights per day for those uh, lower <coughs> endurance one or like what we're talking about uh, one device right per day yeah, for yeah, five yeah, years yeah. guaranteed yeah. something like along those lines so so here what we do is that the hot hotly written yeah. blocks remain in the cars potentially forever thing like you know file system metadata things like that those guys uh, or, or database metadata, so, or even so this, so this cache is replicated to another host. Yes, always, always okay. uh, the same principle I described before, right? right. So, so and the the data in this case are the states to the capacity tier only when it gets cold. If it doesn't get cold, it stays there forever, right? Yeah. Uh, and uh, the the of course the availability reliability requirements remain the same. Okay, now uh, efficient vSAN sparse this new format. So this is, as I mentioned earlier, this is a feature we uh, developed for 6O, which takes advantage of the Virsto, uh, the, the technology we acquired with, uh, with uh, the Virsto. So essentially, Virsto is now in, in 6O, our a new on this format, which is why upgrading from 5.5 to 6O involves a rolling upgrade, which also migrates data a little bit, but, uh, but uh, it does it in a completely <coughs> seamless way, but <coughs> data are, the, the entire data in your cluster, you have 5.5 five and move to 6.0, 6.0 is going to be rewritten in the background gradually as your rolling upgrades happen. Uh, so with Virston now being our on this format, you can take some advance of that and have this new technology, uh, which uh, uh, is built using the same delta disk harness we have already in ESX. Things, the concepts you know, right? When you take a snapshot, on top of a, of a base uh, VMDK, we create a delta disk on top of that, and we create one of them for each delta disk uh, snaps we have. Now, the difference with the traditional redo logs are that the older redo logs had their own on this format. 
essentially was a, 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 tree, a tree data structure that was patching 512 uh, block uh, data as they were written in its level. In, in this case, this, uh, every, every uh, d delta disk is a native uh, vSUN object that uses the underlying uh, v, uh, Visto sparse format. So whenever we write at, and we write at the top of the delta disk hierarchy, we, we keep track of the blocks that are written and uh, in a way that we don't have any new additional uh, data structures that overlaid on top of the file system data structure. So in addition to that, we have an in-memory cache that keeps track of these written extents, as we call them, so they can serve from in-memory really efficiently. And if uh, a, a, a read uh, misses the, the, the in-memory cache, <coughs> we have an efficient get write extend operation that traverses quickly all the objects in parallel that are in the, in the delta hierarchy and gets all those written extents into the memory cache so the, the read can be served from the right level into the hierarchy. So can I take five minutes to go over some data? Are you guys? We really have to go. You do? OK. So data, scroll through it really quick. I'll scroll through very quick. Ah, darn. So look at this. This is uh, what we, we use traditionally as our test and dev uh, workload. It's essentially many VMs running on, on the host doing Linux carrier compilations. And every, every, every time we do like we, we suck in a, about a couple of months worth of new uh, development on the Linux kernel, we take a snapshot and do a clean rebuild. You see all, with all these snapshots up to 32, there is virtually is minimal performance overhead. We, now, I don't want to bullshit you because this is a good example, but there are some worst case examples. And here's the worst case example, which is a database. You know, that big monster that rides in a checker box thing, right? So this is the workload, this is DVD, DVD store, a Microsoft SQL Server workload. The workload itself goes down, this is actually, uh, this is the behavior even in physical, right? In physical problems. The workload itself has certain characteristics uh, as it grows, the database it goes down, the performance goes down. Now look at this, as we take snapshots, up to about 16 snapshots, we have a very small degradation, about 1 to 1.5% for each snapshot we take. Beyond that, here in this uh, test, what we do is we, we have some missing, start missing caches, right? And that's why you see this sharper, sharper decline. However, keep in mind, this is way better than even two or three redo logs of the past. But why that happens, and I, I, I had a lot of things to say here, but in summary, we, we start missing the in-memory uh, write extends cache, which is only 100 megabytes, because of this specific workload characteristics, which spread all over the place, over uh, like 100 gigabytes or so of data. And also, we start getting f uh, filling up the specific SSDs we had for the caching tier. And this is actually hybrid. Here are some, some scalability performance for hybrid. Uh, the, the main point here is that as, the scalab as we add hosts, there is no impact on performance, IOPS. It linearly scales, and, and the latest says this remains the same. And that's because our transactions span only the, the, the breadth of an object, not the entire cluster. Um, so we get constantly 60K and 15.5K uh, for 100% read and 70% read. Uh, th these groups linearly help with scalability. More disk groups, so from one to two, we double the performance. And here are numbers for all flasks. These guys, you, you guys are the first to see this, are fresh out of the press. We're going to release them within the next few days to support our 6.0 release. Uh, here is all, uh, uh, all flash performance, um, some impressive numbers across different working sets. I, round, I put this in a, in a red circle there because that is even the case where the working set is 50% bigger than the, the, the cast tier. Okay, so that's, that's it. Awesome, so thank you. Made it. Thank you. Man, I feel like I ran 100 meters. Thank you.